is so exciting. Welcome to Give to Gustavus Day. Yay! Wow! Well, this is, uh, my name is Tane Danger. I am super excited to be here with you all. I am a Gustavus graduate class of 2007, and I am joining a couple of very familiar faces here today. Angela, you want to say hello? Tane, good morning, Gusties. I'm Angela Erickson, proud member of the class of 2001 and director of alumni and parent engagement at Gustavus. Fired up for Give to Gustavus Day 2020. Tim, how are you doing over in Nobel Hall? This is amazing. I'm in my dream mad scientist space, so I can, I'm can i concocting all kinds of fun things for today. My name's Tim Kennedy. I'm the Vice President for Marketing and Communication, proud member of the class of 1982, and very excited to be with this team today to talk with Gusties from all over the world about Give to Gustavus Day. Go Gusties! Woo! Oh, this is going to be so much fun today. Uh, so obviously you can tell like we're doing things differently this year uh, as everything is different this year. But I, I'm, this is totally true and sincere. Uh, the Gustavus team, there's an amazing crew that is working behind the scenes that has made all of this possible for us to do this safely and to be able, as Tim said, to bring you all kinds of stories, interviews, chats with uh, Gusties from all over the country and all over the world. Um, Angela, do you want to set us up a little bit on what some of the things that we actually already kind of have going on our big board over here are? What our challenges are for today? Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who are familiar with Give to Gustavus Day, you know that today is all about as many donors as we can possibly get giving to the Gustavus Fund, which is the general pot of money that we use around Gustavus to fill in gaps and needs of funding across campus. Everything from instruction to student services to keeping the lights on and the boilers running. Uh, it really is an absolutely critical way to use uh, the valuable resources uh, that donors out there provide to us each year. So uh, yeah, if you're familiar with the challenges, you understand how this works, but we do have some new things in store as well. Uh, I know Tain is standing there in the virtual studio perched atop Olin Hall. If you're kind of, if your mind is blown right now at the fact that he's standing in a studio, but it's not really a studio, so are we. Uh, many thanks, like Tane said, to the folks behind the scenes who have made that possible, and we'll chat a little bit more about it later. Uh, but yeah, we've got some of the standard challenges that we've come to know and love uh, from year to year on Give to Gustavus Day. The 50 state challenge is up and running, and you can see already on that map that probably a third to a half of our states are illuminated. Uh, but we've also got some really cool new challenges this year. Let me see uh, some of the challenges that we've got that are brand new. Uh, number one is the sustainers challenge. We are looking for donors out there who are interested in sort of setting it and forgetting it, right? Giving us a sustained commitment month after month, year after year to Gustavus. Uh, and we are going to unlock a challenge today uh, with 100 new sustainers, uh, we will unlock some funds to uh, spill into that big pot. We're trying to raise uh, half a million dollars today. We're super excited about that goal as well, but really it's all about the donors. Uh, another one of the new challenges today is the Team Gus Challenge. I know, Tane, you had your Gus mask on this morning. Do you want to show off that Gus mask real quick if you have it by your side? Otherwise, I think I have one here too. Okay, oh, Team goodness. Gus Challenge. Here we've got a mask. Oh yeah, Tane will demonstrate for us. But if you give a gift of $60 or more today, you will unlock the Team Gus, help us unlock the Team Gus Challenge. And that challenge will allow you to get one of those limited edition Gus Gustavus masks. It's going to be epic. There's a limited quantity available. So please make your gift early today to take advantage of that deal. Um, Another really cool feature of this year is our social media challenge. Uh, some prizes that we'll be unlocking. Uh, we will be encouraging folks to share pictures of themselves today on social media. Uh, you wanna make sure you're using the hashtag fire up the browser. 
uh, why Gustavus or go Gusties, and we will be drawing at random today. Really cool idea. You, if you are the recipient, right, and your name is drawn, you get to designate two hundred and fifty dollars of somebody else's money to go to the department or program or area of campus of your choice. And so, not only are you making a big impact and a big splash in um, in the the big pool and the big pot of uh, Gustavus fund dollars, but you get to designate some funds where you would like as well. So uh, that's really fun. Uh, we'll be updating those winners throughout the day. Uh, and then last but not least, you're not going to want to miss this. And Tane, I might uh, toss it over to Tim, but then I'm going to toss it over to you to talk about the after party. So Tim, do you want to talk for us just for a minute uh, about why we are set up in three different studios and kind of what's some of the magic going on behind the scenes here? Happy to do that, Angela. You know, uh, we're thinking of all of you gusties all over the world today. Obviously, uh, the pandemic has put us in a new place and we've had to think about how can we keep everyone safe? And that's been Gustavus's objective since this all started last spring. And so today we are carrying through with what we were doing all over campus. And that is putting ourselves in places separately from each other in space, social distancing, but at the same time, making sure that we're all together, just like I can see all of you and we'll look forward to seeing all the Gusties today. So we're making sure that we're safe we're making sure that we're focused on keeping everyone safe. And then we'll just keep moving forward and innovating like Gusties do and making our lives count and changing the world. Over to you, Tane. Okay, so we have something very special uh, that we wanna kick this whole day off with. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw this over right now to something we've got together uh, with a, a very special guest. So uh, I'm gonna say, let, let's go, let's hit it, Barb. I am Tain Danger for Give to Gustavus Day outside the steamery and outside Anderson Theater. And I have two fabulous uh, gusty greeters here with me. And I will just say, I am very glad you are not shouting at me yet. Uh, so uh, <laughs> do you want to quickly introduce yourselves? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm Tori. Uh, I'm a senior here at Gustavus. I'm a geography major and one of the greeter coordinators. That's fabulous, and you are? I'm Lawrence, I'm also a senior uh, physics major and I am the other co coordinator. Okay, Gusty Greeters, I imagine everybody who's watching has a memory of, you know, driving up uh, the hill and seeing you all like shouting and yelling and clapping and making all kinds of noise. Uh, but this year, it must have been sort of different. I don't know, what, what happened this year? Yeah, as far as cheering on the hill, that was a little bit different. Um, we definitely had to be six feet apart um, and we were masked up, but you still have the same energy, still um, getting excited about the first years coming up. And in general with orientation, we were able to do a lot of the activities that, a lot of the same um, mission that like we have with orientation, community building, getting people to know each other and getting oriented with the campus, um, but just the events looked a little bit different. And was it, was it harder, more important, uh, different somehow to really create that sense of like, yes, we are excited you are here this year, first years? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of things were different when they came on campus and you know, campus looked a little different than it usually does. Um, but for the most part, we tried to keep that positive outlook, you know, 
like Tori was saying, keep our same mission statements, developing community, like helping that transition out for them um, with following all the COVID guidelines and stuff like that. Um, but it was still sort of, I don't know, we just had, we got to get really creative with it all. Um, yeah. But like Tori was saying, like we were able to do so much of the same things. Did you um, have a, you mentioned getting creative. Did you have like a particularly fun, different, weird thing that you did this year that you remember? Um, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we did, so Playfair is our big group icebreakers and team builders. Um, and the first years throughout the last, I think, three years have really, really loved that. Um, but the problem is it's so, it's so touchy-feely. It's, you know, like it's hands-on, you're so close together, no masks, everything like that, in a, in a normal year, right? Um, and this year, we were fortunately able to do Playfair online. Mm. Um, so it was over Zoom. All the first years were invited, even the ones that weren't directly on campus. So that was amazing in itself. Um, and going to it, attending it, seeing the first years, seeing them interact, I think they still really, really enjoyed it. So the idea of why we do Playfair was still able to come across, even if it was over Zoom. So I thought that was a really fun thing. Okay, it's really important to say, for to set the table, first years came back before the rest of upperclassmen this year. And there was sort of an element of like, you know, we were gonna have them back to see how this whole thing was gonna work. That's a lot of pressure on first year students how did they do? They did great. They honestly, they modeled really awesome behavior. They followed all the COVID guidelines. Um, and honestly, we were really fortunate to have such a great group of greeters this year to model that behavior for them right from the get go. They were great during training and then going into orientation, they were just perfect role models for that. And these first three weeks on campus, they've just been following that to a T. I mean, I know I was nervous to come back and have people here, but they really alleviated all anxiety and excelled all of our, my expectations. Okay, uh, my last thing, th that is fabulous to hear. I'm so happy about that. So you all are, are greeters, like you are the quintessential like uh, gusty spirit uh, people. <laughs> and so I'm wondering if you can just help me make the like very enthusiastic pitch to people that they should give to Casabas today on Give to Casabas Day. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. I mean, yeah, they should, I mean, I think we have a wonderful community here and I think we get a lot of benefits during Give to Gis Davis Day and I think it's, it's wonderful and it's the reason why we are able to bring people back, we are able to have students on campus and why we are able to provide all these wonderful resources for the students coming here because we saw the students here care, they are wonderful people and we get a different kind of student that comes to Gustavus and if we're able to provide them with all these resources um, and all these opportunities I think it just it, it makes the experience for them and the world just a lot better. Oh that is beautiful. That is what you are supporting with Give to Gustavus Day. You're making this community stronger, you are providing opportunities, you're making the world a better place. So don't skimp. Give now and give give heavily. Give, give with all of the enthusiasm that a gusty greeter would give you a high five on a normal year. All right, thank you so much. Uh, give, give, give now. Yay, that was great. That was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was fabulous. from campus. My name is Thomas Young. I have the privilege of serving as your Vice President for Advancement and I'm so pleased that you could join us for this Day of Giving. This is an annual tradition that we so love on campus and look forward to being with you all day long with all of our challenges and all the opportunities to share in the success of the college. You probably have seen on the home page we have our tally board uh, where you can keep track of all the good things going on and I see there's lots of states that are moving from uh, uh, gray to gold which is what we want to do because we want to get all of the states gold. We've done it every year we're going to do it again this year. But right now I want to bring our next guest in for the start of the day and it's my privilege to welcome to live broadcast of Give to Gustavus Day 2020, President Rebecca Bergman. President Bergman, are you there? Good morning, Tom, and good morning, Gusties. Great to have everyone out there with us this morning. It seems absolutely appropriate to me that you would be in a science lab today. I think you're at home there. That's the right spot for you. This is the exact right spot for your president because this is a second home 
for me, at least in former days uh, when I was more directly functioning as an engineer. But yeah, that's, this is kind of fun. That's fantastic. Uh, today is give, uh, give the Gustavus Day. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of excitement. But what do you look forward to most on a day like today? Well, this is a day that we can connect with alumni all over the world. And Tom, you mentioned the map. Uh, and I love watching those states flip from gray to gold each year. And I would love to do that, like set a record that we're going to do that before lunchtime today. Or I'm, you know, so let's get going. One of the reasons why we want to flip all of those states from gray to gold is the 50 state challenge. You and uh, Dr. Tom have been so generous each and every year with a $50,000 match. When we turn that 50th state, uh, we add $50,000 to our total. Why is it fun for you to see the whole country represented? Well, to me, that just represents Gusty's everywhere. And what a, what a point of pride for us as an institution that we have Gusty's participating in Give to Gustavus Day uh, all over the United States. And it's pure fun. Uh, so Gusty's out there, tune in, let's get going. I want to do an early shout out to Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, I'm looking over, still gray. Sometimes they've been towards the end of the day. Why don't we move them up to the front of the day and, and let another state be the 50th to turn it this year. So come on, Alabama. Come on, Mississippi. We want to see you represented early as quickly as possible. Becky, remind me, how many years have you been president? Oh, can you believe it, Tom? This is my seventh year as president of Gustavus. And what a journey it has been. Just purely fun, challenging, and also uh, inspiring. Because being a president of a college, you get to watch students grow up. You get to help them graduate, move on. And there's nothing that gives more satisfaction. I absolutely think this is the biggest privilege of my life. I'm thinking, I'm going out on a limb, I'm guessing 2020 has been different than the first years of your presidency. Well, I guess you could say that. We've had a little bit of change due to the fact that we're in a pandemic. But I have to tell you that the resourcefulness and the resilience of our community has been so impressive. You know, despite the challenges of COVID-19, it seems like the year is off to a good start. Students on campus. When did the, when did the planning start to think about bringing our students back to campus? And what did that look like? Yeah, our plan started in the spring and we put together a great team of people and lots of participation across the college. So over a hundred people got together and wrote a detailed plan to help us bring people back to campus. That's fantastic. And um, I noticed uh, that you have also involved the alumni community, both in the spring with the emergency fund outreach uh, as we transitioned quickly in the spring. Uh, from our traditional in-class to online classes. And then over the summer, uh, alumni, friends, parents participated in uh, securing support for all those welcome back PPE kits. Uh, say a little bit about that. Yeah, I, and Tom, this was the most impressive outreach uh, from our alumni to help our students. In the spring, the emergency fund, uh, well over $30,000 was collected essentially overnight with an ask to our community. And then over the summer, we put together care kits for our students as they returned back to campus. It included hand sanitizer and masks for them uh, and a number of other goodies in a care package. And again, we had over a thousand alumni generate over $100,000 for us to dedicate to bringing students back safely on our campus. Super impressive. It's been really, really fun to see the, the high percentage, I would say 99% of our students who are wearing their masks. Um, social distancing is hard for students, but mask compliance, and I think it's been translating into 
some, some good success for us and keeping our numbers really, really low. Now, we have students who have really leaned in and couldn't be more proud of our students and our employees in working together to make sure our community is safe. Becky, in the last minute that we have together, we couldn't, uh, we'd be, uh, it'd be remiss not to mention the work of our faculty uh, and the way they transitioned in the spring and the work they're doing this fall. Uh, we announced that they were the recipients of this year's Alumni Association's Greater Gustavus Award, the highest award that the Alumni Association can present. Say a little bit about the faculty. Yeah, there is no group on campus that deserves our praise more than our faculty. The way they pivoted in the spring to do online learning. And this is a group of faculty who is not particularly interested. So we're doing online learning very successfully now. And congratulations to our faculty. Thank you, President Bergman. Thank you for the work you're doing. I think, uh, friends, you can see a, a growing theme here of gratitude. Gratitude to our students for the work they're doing. Gratitude to our faculty for the incredible work they're doing. But it's made possible by you, the Greater Gustavus community. And so we extend our gratitude to you and thanks. And I think we're going to queue up a video that talks a little bit about that. So why don't we take a look at that video? Thanks, everybody. Let's have a great day. Because of your generosity, we are able to be here on campus today. Your donations provided a PPE care package for every single student here on campus to ensure our safety while we continue our education. And for that, I am so grateful. I know that Gustavus would be a community no matter where we were located, but it feels so nice to know that we're gonna be able to have all our classmates together on campus. Thank you so much for the resources you provided us to do that safely. Your donation has allowed us to return to campus so that I can continue to practice with my team and spend time with the people that I love. I've been having a great time on the Gustavus campus. I've loved my dorm, my classes, and all the people I've been able to meet here. And I'm very excited and thrilled that I'm on campus for the fall. It's phenomenal to just realize that I have the opportunity and the privilege to be back on campus with the, with the support of you and other donors. I'm happy to be back on campus and happy to be, um, you know, participating in everything that I couldn't do at home. So thank you again. Thank you so much for helping me to start my college experience strong and for giving me materials to keep me safe um, throughout the semester. I just wanted to give you guys a big thank you for your donations and for, you, for your help towards the GAC community. It's definitely made me feel more welcome. It really means a lot to me that people care enough so we can come back on campus and feel completely safe. I would just like to thank you and for the two months I've been to school. It's been a little like life changing. So I just thank you guys. It's fantastic that you're giving back to the college and you're helping all of us, all the students here on campus make this the most safe and healthy place it can be. It's really important to me that all the students have an equal opportunity to protect themselves here on this gorgeous campus. The school has been making really great efforts to help everyone follow COVID precautions. It's definitely different than years past. Um, lots of online classes and rules to remember, but I'm very grateful to be back, so thank you. Life on the Hill has been pretty crazy, but um, with your help, it's been a little smoother. We're distancing and wearing our masks, and part of that is because of your donation. So thank you so much. It's been kind of interesting because Everywhere you see, obviously everyone's wearing a mask. Yeah, this is probably the first time I haven't been wearing a mask today. Everything seems great. I, I enjoy it. It doesn't matter. Even with the boundaries, it's, it's great to be here. I really appreciate your generosity, and I just wanted to say thank you. This has been a great year so far, and it's thanks to donors like you. We really want to say a big thank you. Thank you so much for your donation. I am so excited to be on campus. This is my first year at Gustavus, and I love it so far. Our alumni, we are very thankful for you guys. Um, we're hoping we make you guys proud. Thank you. Thank you again so much for making this possible for all of us here on campus this year. Thank you so much. Saying thank you seems like such an insignificant way to express my gratitude, but regardless, I'm going to say it one more time. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
Bye. Okay, are you recording? All right, I'm Chain Danger. This is Give to Gustavus Day. I'm gonna do some socially distanced chats with folks working here at the Courtyard Cafe. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way. That's okay. perfect. So what's your names? I'm Kara Gardner. Kara? I'm Mia Leverage. This is great, and uh, you, you're both working here. How, how long have you been uh, working here at the Courtyard Cafe? Yeah, I've been working here um, since my freshman year, my first semester, so about a year now. Okay. Me as well, I've been doing that. So yeah, okay, this is great. And what is different and what is the same other than this force field? Yeah, this set barrier. <laughs> yeah. Mass. This, do you like the barrier? Does it make it so when people are like furious and they're like, you <laughs> put two shots in my macchiato and they throw yeah. it, you're like, you can't get me. Yeah, that's pretty much my favorite part of having this. Um, yeah. Also, just like being safe and everything. Oh yeah, so. that too. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. then, yeah, just the difference is like masks and we, t we can't take um, the cups anymore. So we, when it's bring your own cup mug thing, we can't do that. But otherwise it's pretty much the same, which yeah. is really nice because I love the community that we have with people coming in and also people that come in every day. Um, it's really nice to see them all again. Is um, coffee demand what it always is? No. No? Are people like getting off of caffeine? Is this a trend? Should I be doing this? I think so. Okay, <laughs> not today. Uh, I need all the caffeine I can get today. So this is good. So you all are, are relatively they're happy and well and safe and yeah. like, all right. Uh, so if you were to try and just help me do my job and tell people why they should give to Gustavus, what would you say? Well, first of all, I would say that I just love it here. I'm so glad that we are back on campus and Seeing all of my friends again has been so much fun, and I think people should give to Gustavus because this is like, I don't know, just making it the college what it is um, helps a lot, and uh, we're just thankful for everyone who gives and makes the college experience on campus and everything that makes it fun. And was yeah. I love it. That's good. And um, if you give twenty thousand dollars, you will <laughs> personally make them. A macchiato with two shots yes. in it. Yes, you can take my word for it. I'll I make it make with it. three shots. <laughs> what? This is a good deal. All right, thank you both so much. This is fabulous. I'm gonna. Fine. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Okay, everybody, you heard them. The next donor who gives $20,000 will get a three shot macchiato. All right, go, give now. Welcome back everyone. So glad to have you here. This is Tim Kennedy, um, proud member of the class of 1982. We're back in the main studio, this beautiful space that you see behind you. And we are moving along here. We are 30 minutes into our day. And if we look over at our screen here, we have some pretty exciting news. We are at about $22,205. So we moved over that $20,000 mark. So thank you everyone who's getting up early and getting Gusty's going this morning. Hope you're enjoying that first cup of coffee and sharing this live stream with all of us. We also can see that we're doing pretty well on the state challenge. Um, we are really looking good in the gold there in the Midwest. And as they're waking up out west, we're gonna get those states all filled in. We're working to that 50 state challenge, which was one of the really fun challenges of the day. And we're also doing pretty well on those class challenges. We've seen there that we have a great group that's uh, leading the pack here as we start today. Uh, class of 1995, class of 1983, that group starting off the challenge is going really, really well. So again, we're here this for the long haul today. We hope that you enjoy all of the different groups that we're going to talk with. Really excited to bring with you here in a couple of minutes some parents who will give us their perspective of what's really happening on campus, how it's going for them and their students, and then 
continue to move on through the day with some really fun groups to talk to you and tell you the story of what's happening here at Gustavus as we move on to this incredible time in the history of the college. So I think we're going to move ahead. I'm going to tell you right now that I'm so excited to have with me this morning uh, Sue Lundquist and Erwin Concepcion. Uh, really pleased to have you with me here today. Uh, I hope you're having a great start to your day. Thank you so much for joining us. And what I'd love for you to do is tell us, uh, for those that are joining us today, can you tell them a little bit about yourself and your ties to Gustavus and how you're connected, not only from your history with the college, but also with your students that have come to Gustavus. So Sue, I'll start with you. Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're welcome, thank you, Tim. Uh, like Tim said, I'm Sue Lundquist. I live in Rochester, Minnesota with my husband, Eric Lundquist. Both of us did attend Gustavus. One of us happens to be four years older than the other, so we never uh, attended school together, but met at a guesty wedding many years down the road. Um, I was actually the first family member to attend Gustavus, but have since started a bit of a tradition there. We have three kids, um, never ever, you know, pressed our kids to look at Gustavus or go to Gustavus. And I, if you would have asked me 25 years ago, um, if we would be this strong of a Gusty family, I would have had no idea, but we have three Gusties. Our oldest, Anna, graduated in the class of 2016. Our son, John, graduated in the class of 2018. And our youngest, Peter, is currently there as a senior. And I've just gotten more and more involved at the college now that we've had our, our kids go there currently involved on the Parents Council, as is Irwin, and also on a board student life committee. Um, so really enjoying my involvement there. Thanks, Tim. Awesome, thank you. Irwin, can you tell us a little bit about how you're connected with the college? Oh, absolutely. I think, um, thanks also, Sue, for going first. Um, I'm Irwin Concepcion. Uh, my wife, Jeanette, and I, neither one of us uh, are from Minnesota. We um, have two daughters that are that are Gusties now, so we've been drawn into this uh, wonderful community. I'm from Indiana, and Jeanette's from Missouri. So we were unaware of Gustavus actually until our oldest daughter, who graduated a couple years ago, Lindsay, discovered Gustavus amongst all of her college visits and absolutely fell in love with it. And throughout her four years, uh, she uh, continued to have just a wonderful experience. And when our second daughter came along, and was looking at colleges. She too. She also did a um, uh, a thorough review and fell in love with it. So since then, we've definitely been part of the Gusty community and, and have had a great uh, great time enjoying our girls' experiences through Gustavus. Thanks so much, Erwin. I appreciate it. You know these segments go so quickly, and I want to have some more time, but I want to quickly get to as we move to the end of it. We want to talk a little bit about Sue. I'll throw it to you first. What's it like having a student at Gustavus during the pandemic? What's it been like for you and your student? Yep, it ups and downs. The spring was tough. I'll be honest, but things are going great right now. Um, our son Peter wants nothing more than to be on campus and in classes. So he and we are so grateful for that right now. He's even practicing with the basketball team in masks and in pods, um, but they are doing it. And we are just so grateful for that. I would be dishonest to say that he's not, doesn't have some sadness. He wants nothing more than to have the Gustavus experience that he signed up for. But we and he both feel that the staff and administration wants them on campus. And again, just so, so happy um, and grateful that they are able to do that right now. So that's where we stand. Um, things are good and again, very grateful. Well, thanks so much, Sue. And Erwin, how about you? How about Haley and her experience and, and, and how it's going for you right now? Absolutely. It's, it's a balancing act. It's clearly stressful for Haley as a senior. She's really having a tough time making the connections, wrapping things up and moving ahead the way she feels like she should be. Uh, the balancing act comes that those are the stressors. And yet um, the, the college, the staff, administration, professors, her close friends, they really support her. So she's in the best environment and most to be right now for this tough time. Well, thanks so much. You know, I, I, I want to thank both of you for uh, you and your families and how generous you have been to the college. Um, we have one minute here to wrap up before we move on to the next segment. 
Um, can you talk just real quickly, the two of you, about why it is that you support the college and why you have been so generous? Sue? Yep. I don't know. Just bottom line, I believe in the mission of Gustavus. I think the leadership is so strong right now. And we we have really seen our kids been able to have a, a super quality education and well-rounded liberal arts education, I would say. And well persuaded but all three of them pursuing a sport that they love to play. So we just want to be leaders and work to strengthen the future for generations to come. Thank you. Erwin. I want to support the college because the college supports both of my daughters 110%. I want to keep the college healthy so that they can help keep my daughters healthy. Thank you so much, both of you, for all that you do for the college, the ways that you engage. Gustavus is the place that it is because of people like you. And so we're so really grateful. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a great day and go Gusties. Go Gusties, thank you. Fabulous. Okay, we are here uh, with somebody who has a unique and special and really important job. So uh, Linnea, very yeah. nice to meet you. You're here with Gus, and what what is going on? What are you all about to do with these bags? So I am the COVID case manager for Gustavus, and we are delivering food to people in quarantine. So this is um, obviously like maybe not exactly what you were thinking, but I can't stress like how important this job of yours <laughs> is right now. What can you just talk us through like what you're responsible for and what what is involved? Yeah. So anytime that we hear that a student is feeling sick, or maybe they were exposed to someone with COVID then we take care of them and make sure that they get into a space where they're not potentially infecting other people. We make sure they get tested. We make sure they have the food they need and everything so they can do their classes remotely from campus if they choose to stay here. Wow, and so this is like a, a level of care that, again, I, I just haven't heard of or seen before because you are have wraparound services for students who maybe are either come down with COVID or even exposed to it potentially. Mm -hmm. If someone does is diagnosed with COVID, like what is the protocol? What do you do? Yeah, so we, um, if they're tested and they and they do have COVID, then we start our contact tracing, and that would mean that anyone that they have been in contact with, we want to get a hold of them and make sure that they get tested and that they also get into quarantine because, as we know, we have people who they might not even feel sick, but they could be passing the virus on to others. So we just want to really make sure that we're containing that spread very quickly. Um, especially on a college campus where we have to keep everybody safe and we are a community living together. That is so true. And this is the part that blows me away. It's like, <laughs> it's not even that, you know, you are quarantining and you're making sure that they can do their classes and then you hand deliver food. Mm -hmm. That is very cool. Yeah. So we, I mean, we want to make sure that they're cared for. Uh, it's not an ideal situation ever, right? To be away from your friends and away from your roommates. So we want to make it as comfortable and as, um, also safe for everybody else, right? We don't want them coming to the CAF if they're potentially sick. So it's both doing them a service and taking care of them, but also keeping the rest of us safe by having these types of contactless deliveries and giving them what they need. All right, uh, well, we should we should go deliver Let's this go food. deliver right, food. let's go see. Let's go do this food, okay. Okay, so that was a fun ride. And where <laughs> are we now? So we are outside the retreat center. This is one of four spaces that we have for people who are in quarantine or in isolation due to COVID. Um, and so we are very fortunate that we have that space on campus. Some people choose to go home, but it's nice that they can stay here. And the, how does, we brought this food over. Uh, how does this process work? Yeah, so to ensure that it is a contactless delivery um, for the anonymity of the people inside and for our own safety, we have coolers um, outside all of the spaces. And so we just drop them off in there and then we let the case managers know that it's ready to be picked up and then the students can come out and get it. And I think this is a very cool thing. We can kind of head over this way where you mentioned like it's uh, anonymous, like so that, you know, a, a student or whatnot doesn't end up with some sort of 
scarlet letter, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, COVID. Right, yeah. I mean, we hope that the stigma of having COVID isn't a negative experience. And so we just want to protect their identities and make sure that they can be safe and comfortable at the same time. So then we would just throw it in the coolers here. And it, go ahead and set it in there. Good job, Gus. Hard to do with big paws, but he did it. So That's good. Okay, so the last thing that I'll say about this uh, is... You know, you are doing yeoman's work to like keep people safe uh, and keep people comfortable and actually having a good experience. I mean, it feels a little crass to like make a, a fundraising pitch. And yet it's like this isn't free. Like this is like a whole new set of services that mm -hmm. Gustavus is providing that didn't exist last year. And like you had to figure out whole new systems and whole new ways of doing things. And this is your full-time job now, is taking yeah. care of this. Yeah, we've pretty much trained. A lot of people on campus have pitched in. That has been a total team effort. Steep learning curve for everyone involved. We are so thankful that we have a health service on campus who can do testing. A lot of places don't have that. We have a dining service who can put together meals that can accommodate vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, any anything that a student needs, they can have it right here. And so we just have great departments who have really put a ton of effort into this. And we're going to get through this year together. We are going to get through this year. And I'll just say it for them. Like, this is why we need your support, because this is an extra need. This is an extra burden in some ways. An extra opportunity maybe is a better way to put it in terms of taking care of each other. And Gustavus is doing this about as well as anybody in the country or in the world is doing it. And this is what your dollars are going to help support. So please give, give generously, because uh, this is what it's all about. So mm -hmm. thank you Absolutely. very much. Absolutely. Yes. All right. This is good. We should leave. We should get Gus back, back to campus. All right. Cool. Good morning, everybody. It's Give to Gustavus Day. Welcome back. I'm Angela Erickson, proud member of the class of 2001 and director of alumni and parent engagement here at Gustavus. This next segment, I'm really excited to visit for a few minutes with two members of the engine of Gustavus, uh, members of the faculty here on campus. Uh, why don't you both take just a minute to introduce us uh, to yourselves, who you are, um, what subject you teach, and maybe how long you've been on campus. Blake, let's start with you. Hi, I'm Blake Cooey. I'm in the religion department. I've been here since uh, 2009, and I teach in the area of biblical studies. Perfect, thanks. And how about you, Laura? Uh, so my name is Laura Burak. Uh, I've been here since 2015. I teach in the biology department, uh, and I teach classes uh, ranging from microbiology to cancer biology to a first-term seminar on genetic testing. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedule this morning to visit with us and all of the alumni and friends out there. Um, I'm sure that they're curious to hear from you because, as we all know, uh, education has sort of been flipped on its head over the last nine months. So I would like to visit with you just for a second about March. We all know that the pandemic hit and we needed to make some quick decisions. Can you talk through just for a moment, and maybe I'll start with you, Blake, what was maybe the biggest challenge and the biggest success or win associated with that spring semester in particular? Getting our students, class of 2020 graduated, making sure all of our students on campus were making satisfactory academic progress. What did that look like for you? I mean, the biggest challenge was just how quickly we all had to completely reinvent our courses. None of us had any inkling when we were planning out the semester that we'd be going online a little less than midway through. And we ended up, we, we had two weeks to make that transition, but that just required rethinking assignments, learning new technologies, figuring out all the ins and outs of, of making that transition. And so that was a, that was a challenge. I mean, I think probably the, the biggest success was, was that we did it. And by and large, students reported having a very positive experience. Obviously, there were some bumps along the road. 
And, and I think, I mean, and I, in particular, I was really impressed by how well they handled the transition. And in, in some cases, even, even thrived. They had a lot of shyer students who maybe hadn't spoken up as much in class when we were meeting in person, who suddenly came to life on the message boards online and really made contributions to the class that they hadn't before. So that was a lot of fun to see. Yeah, that's really interesting perspective and amazing how some of these innovations might even linger beyond this COVID era, right? Based on some of those. Yeah, examples. exactly. How about you, Laura? You know, maybe in particular, you could talk about the labs and, and what did you do in the sciences to make that transition pivot so quickly? And, and how are you still making sure that the, uh, the students are having those high impact experiences? So, uh, yeah, so I was actually teaching microbiology in the spring. Uh, and so it was both sort of a case where I had to rethink what we were going to do because students weren't going to be in the lab anymore, but also an opportunity. So in my 300 level microbiology class, for example, we decided that rather than having the students and we actually decided it as a class rather than sort of me deciding for the students. Uh, we decided that we were going to study uh, COVID-19 as the research proposals. So rather than doing something that we would normally do in the lab, uh, instead students actually researched the epidemiology of COVID-19, the biology of exactly how SARS-CoV-2 interacts with the cell, and each one of the students designed their own independent research project sort of based on this. Uh, and actually since that time in sort of May when they turned them in, I've actually seen papers that did exactly the same experiments as the students proposed. So they really did sort of an amazing job um, sort of understanding this really important topic. Uh, so yeah. That's amazing. I, I appreciate that so much. And, and I think it's a testament to you all as faculty, the way you've been mm -hmm. able to engage and involve the students throughout this whole process. Uh, you know, Blake, maybe I'll toss it back to you uh, on, the, on the topic of engagement. You know, I think sometimes people wonder, okay, now that the students are away from campus or, uh, you know, you've got some back, but some are tuning in remotely. How have you been or how do you continue to keep the students engaged? Are there any particular tactics or uh, strategies that you all as faculty have employed there? Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the biggest challenges I'm teaching uh, in person this semester, for the most part, but just masks and not seeing each other's facial expressions and being spread out in the classroom so that we're all a safe distance apart, pose some some new challenges. And I really wasn't sure how to uh, how to respond to that. So I had to be creative. Normally in class, for instance, I'd have students do small group discussions or projects together, uh, and I figured out since. Classes are spread out a lot more throughout the day. There's a little more space out in the hallways now than there normally be. So I just have to send them out in the hallways to do that, for instance. Uh, but, but I find that they, they still they still want to talk. They're still engaged and they, uh, yeah, that they're still uh, particularly on topics that seem relevant to the, the pandemic and the current and the current challenges that we're all facing. Cool. I, we might be having some technical difficulties here. Laura, can you hear me? You wave your hand if you can hear me. She can't hear me. Okay, Blake, I'm going to toss it to you again. You sure. were part of the decision making process uh, this summer and into the fall about some of the adjustments to the academic calendar, right? People on the outside looking in know that we started the semester a little bit early. We didn't bring all of the students back right away uh, and then brought the students back uh, here for a while now and then are planning to maybe uh, dismiss them or give them the opportunity to go home after Thanksgiving and uh, finish the last few days of the semester remotely. Can you talk through a little bit of what that process looked like you know how many people were involved in that and and what was the exchange like during those months that you were making some of those large-scale decisions that really impact the college overall sure so these are all things that we talked about repeatedly over the summer and there, there's really multiple different groups working on that so i'm part of the emergency faculty emergency planning committee uh, where we have five or six faculty uh, who meet with uh, Provost Brenda Kelly, uh, usually multiple times a week. Uh, it was often three times a week over the summer. Uh, we're also triangulating, of course, with uh, 
other administrators and with the COVID, uh, COVID leadership planning team as well. In particular, with the academic calendar decisions, we were taking guidance from the Minnesota Department of Health and, and thinking particularly about uh, the weather. And so starting the semester a week earlier meant more of the semester would happen when there's nice weather outside and students aren't cooped up inside and uh, so there'd be uh, reduced risk of transmission that way. Uh, similarly, uh, after Thanksgiving, uh, as the weather gets colder, flu season starts to kick into effect. Uh, that seemed like it would be a time to it would, where it would be safer to go back online, uh, for example. So yeah. those were those were just some of the factors. Uh, but it's a it's a constantly changing situation. So we'd come to one decision, and then new evidence would show up that would suggest maybe we need to adjust that. And so there was a lot of decision making happening on on the fly as we went along. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been really incredible. I know we might talk about it during other segments too, but over 120 members of campus were involved in some of these COVID action teams. And that's separate from the kind of uh, group that was focused on academics, right? Members of the faculty, really a widespread effort to make sure that all of the pieces of the puzzle were fitting together properly. So many thanks to you and the rest of the faculty team that helped to guide us through those big decisions. Laura, now that you can hear me again, I think, uh, mm -hmm. let's toss it over to you. What have been the constants, right? Obviously, we are in a time of great disruption, you know, both in the way you all do your work, and I give you so much credit. I was a faculty member for a long time, so I know how, what a heavy sled you're pulling right now. But what is, what's remaining the same? What is true to form uh, with regard to how Gusties are learning, uh, how faculty are approaching their work right now? Yeah, I mean, I think it really is still feeling like a community. So even in the class where I have one student who's learning online and the rest of the class came back to campus, like we really do like engage as a whole class together, digging into scientific literature and sort of discussing back and forth. Uh, anytime a student has had to go into quarantine, uh, they can also engage in this online format. And so the students still really help each other. Uh, I still feel like communication with the students is something that's an incredibly important thing that I think has gone really well. Uh, I think that sort of focusing on the science, uh, so in all the classes that I'm teaching, there's an element of science. And so thinking about that has really remained constant. And so I think that in many ways, the class is, is remarkably similar. It feels almost more normal than I might have expected, I think, this semester. Uh, sort of, and I think that the students really are still awesome and still like really sort of engaged with learning cancer biology or in my FTS, really engaging with these tricky questions about genetic testing and the ethics of it and how it all sort of fits together. Uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, yes, gusties are still gusties. And like I say, many thanks to you both and the rest of the faculty. Send our well wishes to them all because we know that you all are doing a lot uh, to make sure that those gusties are given these world-class opportunities to learn and to grow, keeping them engaged and, and involved. And, and we know that it's paying off. I mean, our gusties that are here on campus, as well as those that are tuning in remotely right now for a variety of reasons, you know, really are feeling good about the quality of education that they're receiving, which is obviously what it's all about. So many thanks to you both for being here with us this morning. Thanks for all that you're doing here on campus. Uh, and right now we're going to toss it over to a video with Provost Brenda Kelly. Hello, I'm Tane Danger. Here in Wallenberg, I am going to do the most socially distant interview I have ever done with Brenda Kelly, Provost and Dean of the College. Hi, Tane. Happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you here, far away. Uh, so thank you for joining me in beautiful Wallenberg. And we wanted to talk to you because you are very much uh, on top of how we're doing learning and teaching differently this year. So actually, if we could even take a little walk down memory lane of how you all first started here at Gustavus, reimagining what education was going to look like in this new strange world. Absolutely. So we started planning for the fall semester back in April. 
And at that time, we allowed our faculty to choose the optimal mode of instruction for the classes that they were gonna be offering this fall. So we have classes this fall that are in an 100% uh, online format, a hybrid format, which is like a blended format, partially online, partially in person, and an in-person format for those courses. And the reason we needed to do that is because if you can see in Wallenberg Auditorium, we have a lot of tape across certain chairs so that students can be socially distant in this classroom. So all of the classrooms across campus have been adjusted for to allow students to be socially distant and that uh, forced us or required us to change our mode of, of instruction. So Gustavus faculty are great and I also imagine that there was quite a bit of growing pains and figuring out time of trying to figure all of this out. So how did you work with them, support them, get them to a place where they were able to reimagine everything that they do potentially? Absolutely. Thanks for asking that question. So we did a couple of things. One is I had a great group of faculty leaders that I worked with in late spring and throughout the summer to uh, help imagine with me what this would look like and the resources that faculty needed to continue to deliver an awesome liberal arts educational experience for our students. So one of those pieces was technology. So thanks to an anonymous donor, we received a half million dollar donation specifically toward enhancing technology for the academic program. And so all of our faculty were able to choose one or two additional technology resources in addition to their regular laptop. So some faculty chose um, to add speakers or headphones or microphones or get an additional iPad or camera so that they could um, utilize that in their instructional method, but also be able to accommodate our students who are in isolation or quarantine. That is, I mean, and I guess I'll just ask, uh, being as honest as you're willing to be, how are they doing with it? How, what are you hearing from the faculty in terms of being in this brave new world? Yeah, so uh, we had an amazing faculty development program happening this summer where about 100 to 150 of our faculty did some pretty intense um, training and faculty development workshops toward online teaching and learning, toward hybrid learning, toward how to accommodate students in this brave new world um, and how to, best, how to best adjust um, delivering content in an uncertain environment, in an uncertain instructional environment. Um, and so we did all of that with our faculty this summer and now we've had, um, we are now in week five of the semester and our faculty are appreciative of the technology, are really putting um, our students first as they have uh, developed and adapted toward their instructional modes and things are going pretty well. I think even better than we could have anticipated. That is really fabulous to hear and you have made an excellent case for why people should be giving on Give to Gustavus Day because their support is actually going to make teaching and learning easier and better, particularly now where so many things are dependent on uh, new investments and new ways of imagining things. So if you are watching this right now, make a donation, give money now because you are literally making it possible for us to keep doing the world-class education that Gustavus has offered for generations and is offering in a whole new way now this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brenda Kelly from very far away. Welcome back, Gusties. I sure hope you enjoyed that glimpse into the new Nobel Hall of Science. 
spectacular addition to the college, uh, nearly doubled in size. Uh, Provost Kelly uh, talking about all the benefits of that to the college. Just an incredible uh, sh a sign of support from all of our alums with $50 million contributed from alumni, parents, and friends. Just terrific. Hey, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Uh, um, I gave a shout out when I was on with President Bergman to Alabama and Mississippi, and I'm not sure that they heard me. So I want to give another shout out to Alabama and Mississippi uh, to see if you can get on the board earlier. We don't want to have Alabama or Mississippi the last of the 50 state challenge. Remember, when we turn all the gray states gold, $50,000 from President Bergman and her husband, Dr. Tom, um, and, and we're, we're making progress. So 34 out of 50 states so far. Uh, we always make this challenge. We wanted to make it earlier this year, and so I hope you'll, you'll join me in, in, in helping us get there. I want to point out some of the other challenges that uh, are on the uh, lower left side of the screen, um, and one of them we're going to talk about is the sustainer challenge, and that is uh, having you think about making your gift regularly rather than once a year. Why don't you break it into uh, once a month? And, and become a sustaining member at Gustavus. Uh, we think that's a terrific way to make your gift. And uh, one of the reasons we have our next guest on is because he's a sustaining giver at Gustavus. Would you please join me in welcome from the class of 15, Matt Timmons. Matt, welcome. Good morning, Tom. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's terrific. Thanks for being part of Give to Gustavus Day. Uh, Tell us a little bit about, uh, you've been out about uh, six years now, five, six years. Where have you yeah. been? What are you up to? And, and how's it going for you? Uh, it's going well. Stable and steady and, and uh, doing, doing really well here in northeast Minneapolis. Um, that's where I've been since out of school. I've been up in the cities and uh, just really thrilled to have the next chapter here in Gustavus and, and really carry some uh, important threads with me. So. I work at a small tech startup downtown, uh, now uh, remote right from my office, um, but uh, live with a couple of Gusties and um, even have some, some opportunity to work with Gustavus through, through our startup um, and then work with a couple of the teams on campus still. So definitely keeping the, the spirit alive here um, in, in the cities and, and doing well the last couple of years. You, uh, the firm headed uh, and started working from home in March, I, I imagine, like everybody else. How's that going? Sure. And does that work for your, for, for your firm? Yeah, we're, we're fortunate enough that as far as the actual production of, of what, we, what we need to do, we can do that uh, remotely and, and do it safely. We certainly miss uh, being collaborative in, in the, the office space together, but um, a small sacrifice for, for safety, certainly. Yeah, no, I, it's, uh, it's been a challenge on campus, uh, uh, especially since uh, our, our, if, uh, our students, I almost said our customer base, our students obviously yeah. want to be here on campus. We want them on campus. Uh, and, and one of the challenges we've been doing is trying to figure out how to do that safely for all of our offices and, and having lower density of people in offices uh, and at the same time making sure that we are uh, front and center with our students in all those offices where they need interaction on a daily basis. Uh, thinking back on your Gustavus days, I was, I was, uh, uh, as I was thinking about our time together, you were involved in a whole bunch of organizations. What do you look back on that uh, brings you most joy? Oh goodness! Um, well, they're all they're all tied up in each other. I think there's there's kind of um, the the most important ones, or the ones that I, I think back to maybe most often, would probably be choir, um, Linus Improv Troop, and and Student Senate. Those those three um, kind of uh, got at different facets of the the liberal arts life. One being the arts, uh, one being um, kind of social connection and community, and and one being kind of uh, stewardship and service. So all, all together, those, those three are the ones that I definitely recall most fondly or go back to most frequently for sure. And are, are you uh, still singing? Are you still using your improv? Um, I think uh, in the workplace, I, I get to use my improv quite a bit. Um, but as far as, as singing, um, I haven't found the, the right choir yet. So I miss that dearly and I'm, I'm kind of constantly on the search. Might have to put a pin in that one for a little bit here. Um, but uh, definitely, I think once once safe to, to get choirs back together, uh, it's it's been one that I've been missing a lot in this this time period. I uh, hope I don't catch you off guard. What from improv works well for success in business? Um, 
I think finding a way to affirm uh, your partners in the room, your stakeholders, but then find a way forward. So it's, you know, the basic premise is yes and, 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 and making sure that you've heard, you've understood, you know where your, your people around you are coming from. But that doesn't necessarily mean uh, we, we always have to go in that direction, but affirming them, knowing how to support them, and then provide a, a solution. I think that's probably uh, core across a, a whole lot of occupations. That's super cool. One of, the, one of the donors that I have the privilege of working with is a gentleman named Ray Lundquist, who graduated in uh, 52. Ray has made a gift to Gustavus every single year since he graduated. And you could be the new Ray Lundquist, Matt. You, you've made a gift every year since you graduated. Why is that important to you? And then let's talk a little bit about, you've chosen to do monthly gifts. Why does that work well for you? Yeah, I, I just feel so uh, potently how much Gustavus impacted my life, not only time on the Hill, but continuing to open opportunities for me afterwards, um, giving me tools to, to kind of navigate the world. I, I take that really seriously. I think that was such a gift and it came from literal gifts. It came from uh, Gusties and, and non-Gusties saying the mission of this, this institution is important. Um, so I, I want to pay it forward and, and continue to, to help make that, that gift possible for, for kind of future Gusties, future generations. Um, and so I think being a, a sustaining member is, is kind of twofold. One, it's a commitment. It's, it's allowing the college to say, we can plan, we can forecast, we, we know we can count on you. And uh, the second is, quite frankly, it's easy. I don't have to uh, put it on my calendar or remember. Um, I can budget to it and know that that's in my, in my budget and will be taken care of without me having to do another second thought about it. No, uh, fantastic. Well said. Uh, we really appreciate that. We're grateful for that and uh, um, look forward to other people joining you. We've got a challenge going to see if we can't get a number of sustaining members uh, donors uh, to Gustavus during uh, the challenges today uh, and, and hope that others will respond to your generosity. Um, Matt, thanks for all you're doing. Congratulations on, on your work. Stay safe out there and, and we look forward to seeing you back on campus when we can welcome everybody back to campus again. You bet. Go Gusties. Matt's just a terrific example of, of the way that people can support using their monthly giving. Uh, and invite as many people as possible to, to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, you've heard a little bit about some of the, the challenges and the way we've uh, thought about COVID-19 uh, on campus. And uh, obviously the dining hall is, uh, Evelyn Young Dining Center is an incredibly important part of life on campus. And I think we're gonna take a look at a video on how they've adapted and made some changes to uh, keep that community feel and keep it safe for everybody. Thanks everybody, let's keep going. Okay, oh, okay. We are uh, behind the scenes at Dining Services here. I am here with Paul Matsky. Hello, hello. Uh, so you are gonna show us what is the same and what is different in uh, fall 2020 Gustavus Dining Services. Absolutely. Let's go. Okay. Okay, so far, there are things on the floor. Yes. I'm just noticing things as right. I'm just looking and talking. You know, for students that are working with us, they're gonna have to clock in, of course. So we've got social distancing things that are put up so that they are staying six feet apart when they check in. You have a bucket of masks. We have a bucket of masks that they can use, then they return them and then they get sent out and then we wash them and then we bring them back. That so, makes sense. Yeah, okay. so all is good there. This is good, all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I assume there's still food here somewhere. Yes, the, like we said, some things never change because Davis's food, we're keeping it all the same. We're just prepping it and doing it differently. Yes. Okay. So the food is excellent as always. As always. Yeah, so one thing, oh. one thing that you'll notice now is we're staying six feet apart like everybody's working at a separate table now instead of being together so our cooks and our prep areas are doing it a little differently we got a little bit less people back here wow look at this device that shops all of these tomatoes <laughs> 
Some things stay the same. I love it. Okay, we're next. We're gonna keep oh, wait, walking through. Just, there's so much bacon. Okay, sorry, <laughs> let's go. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yep, everybody's everyone's yep, doing everybody's doing everything. Everything. Right. There's so much frosting. Okay. Every uh, again, we're we're still doing the same food. We're keeping it all this, you know, as much as we can for the students. Out, this, well, that's in the back. That's now we'll back. move to the front. Okay. We're moving to the front. Okay. Oh, look at we're out here. Ooh. Yeah. Look at these. Ooh, these are twist. Uh, cinnamon Fried twist. cinnamon twists. One thing you'll notice that is different now is everything on our salad bar is pre-packaged. So everything individual. Everything is individually. So, you know, for someone who just eats alone, it works out perfectly. <laughs> right. right. Um, today, on Thursdays, is omelet day. Oh, so yeah. one of the things that we're trying to do is keep people moving through our marketplace quicker instead of getting standing in long lines right. so on omelet day instead what we did this time is we're pre-making the omelets okay. which isn't made to order but it gets um the crowd through quicker okay uh what is the most popular kind of omelet generally it's an everything omelet so sausage ham bacon cheese green pepper, onion, I'm going to point out we are walking the wrong way, but you're in charge here, so I feel like we are allowed to keep going this way against <laughs> yeah, the arrows. Yeah, 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 we're disobeying, I guess. Right? Okay. Yeah, but, okay. But we've got arrows on the floor. Okay, you can still get an omelet. Yep. You can have everything in it. We are doing, again, to keep people moving through quicker, we're doing pre-made breakfast sandwiches, pre breakfast which we sandwich. haven't done before, Okay. but delicious, Smells and good. again, grab it and go. This is fabulous. Mm -hmm. This is good. All right. Okay. Anything else you want to show us here? Sure. We can walk out. We'll go with the arrows. Now we're going with the arrows. Yeah. We're quickly moving along. Lots of package yeah. things. This is good. I don't know. Do students just take this and like, you just take this to no, your door and no, you we just, just eat it? <laughs> no, we just got them today. Students are able to buy a pumpkin for their dorm. That's fun. I know, right? I love it. Okay. Delicious. And? Pumpkin. Of course, we've got a sign here. We're making sure that the students are staying six feet apart, get to the register, go out quickly. This is good. I and then it. in the dining room. Okay, we're going to the dining room, we're going this way. We have, of course. Can students also buy one of these and take them to their dining room? <laughs> I don't know that they need two pounds of ketchup, but I suppose if they really wanted it. Um, but you can see we moved everything outside of the marketplace. These were all inside. We've now moved them outside. Again, we've got extra. We ordered extra of everything. So again, it just keeps students moving through. Our tables are now six feet, six foot spaced, two at a table on opposite sides. We've got arrows coming in here. So they come in, they go in and go out. Okay. This is fabulous. Food is still delicious. Food is still delicious. You can still get an omelet. You just keep Unther moving. Yeah. You never stop moving. <laughs> no, we tried it again. It's getting them through less time together. I love it. Right. Unfortunately, that is not what we want to do, but at this time, but it's, it's the safe thing to it's do. It's the safe and the uh, expedient, fast moving Absolutely. thing to do. Yeah, life doesn't slow down No. at Gustavus. Neither does food. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Thank you so much, Paul. This was a fun whirlwind tour. Okay, thank you, I team. Love it. All right, good job. Welcome back everyone. So glad to have you back here in the main studio for Give to Gustavus Day 2020. My name is Tim Kennedy, proud member of the class of 1982 and the Vice President for Marketing and Communication at Gustavus. Just a quick shout out to the food service and everything they're doing. I hope you enjoyed that video uh, and to Tane and all he's doing to bring in all that to you today. But uh, Steve Chilgren and his staff are doing an amazing job. 
Uh, I am really excited to have a chance to chat right now with two of our really special students at Gustavus and two of our really important leaders. And I am proud to welcome to you all today, Evie Doran and Haley Concepcion. How are you two doing this morning? Doing pretty good, how are you? Doing really well. I just wanna first of all say thank you for all that you two have done to help during this amazing time and, and to really help uh, give a voice to the students and to lead on this campus. Um, Haley, I'll throw it to you first. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and how you ended up at Gustavus? Yeah, so my name is Haley Concepcion, as Tim said. I'm a senior here. I'm majoring in political science and peace studies with a minor in Latin American studies. And I'm one of the co-presidents of Student Senate along with Evie and Gustavus kind of runs in the family. My sister came here, so that's how I found out about it. Toured, automatically loved the community. It just, it, it really felt like home. As cliche as that sounds, it does feel like home. Um, and I've been staying ever since. Awesome. And Evie, what's your Gustavus story? Yeah, so uh, my name's Evie Dorn. I'm a senior English and political science major with a management minor. And I'm also a co-president of Student Senate with Haley. And my Gustavus story is a little different. Um, I don't really have a ton of family in Minnesota, but we moved here uh, just before I started high school. And I knew as soon as I was looking at uh, my college decision that I was really passionate about finding a school with a great community and a sort of emphasis on service to others. And I found that as soon as I looked at Gustavus. Well, hey, Evie, can you talk uh, to expand on that a little bit? How did you end up getting interested in Student Senate, which led to being a co-president? Uh, I remember I was a freshman and I was initially kind of hesitant about joining Student Senate. So I didn't uh, run for any of the freshman elections. But once I found out that they needed an ombuds person, which is their sort of ethics chair and the person that makes sure that we're following the bylaws and constitution, um, I decided to, you know, shoot my shot and uh, I've been in it ever since. And Haley, how did you get involved in Student Senate? A little bit by accident, like Evie, I was really hesitant at first until I got the email that no one in Pittman Hall applied to be your hall representative. And I was like, oh, I made some friends. Everyone write me in. Um, it was the best decision I kind of ever made. I've been on that path ever since. I was student academic affairs chair sophomore year, administrative director last year, and now co-president. So it's been something that's been really, really integrated into my life at Gustavus. Well, obviously, if you two were looking ahead, this is not the type of situation that you would have hoped for for your senior year, but you two have embraced it and done such an amazing job. Can you talk a little bit about what is up with the Student Senate? And Haley, I'll throw it to you first. What, what has the Student Senate been up to? And just tell us a little bit of it, and you can throw it to Evie. Yeah, so currently we are all online on Zoom for both our general meetings and our cabinet meetings, which has been a little bit tricky. We did have a bit of practice last spring once we went online, um, but we've kind of got it down now with modifying our parliamentary procedure towards being online and everyone's been really, really adaptable to that. We did a lot of work over the summer meeting with our cabinets. We assembled that quite a bit and um, that was able to lead us to establish an ad hoc committee at our very first meeting. That's our anti-racism and racial justice ad hoc committee, which we're really excited to see the work they're going to do this year. Fantastic, yeah, and I think that Yeah, I think that one of the guiding questions we're looking at uh, as we serve in this unique year is how can we continue to serve students to the best of our ability when their needs have changed slightly? Uh, we're focusing less on funding events and stuff and rather looking at improving general student life. Uh, so that means we've been working a lot on uh, improving our ability to serve students that are you know, negatively impacted by the unique technological needs of this time. And then also serving students who, you know, feel disconnected or students that fall outside of the realm of what we normally think of as, a, you know, Augusti, like looking at uh, expanding our definition mm -hmm. of uh, who belongs to the Gustavus community and making sure everyone feels that. So as you two have gotten back now, and you've been here from the start of the school year, you came back with the first years and were engaged and got that group started on campus. And then you welcomed your classmates back uh, two and a half, three weeks later. Can you talk about the atmosphere on campus and how it feels to you and how your experience is going? I'll, I'll start with Evie. Yeah, I think that everyone uh, 
I think that the thing I've told other people has been, you know, hesitantly optimistic. Um, I know that, you know, it's different this year for sure, but I think that if there's a place that's built to weather something like this, it's Gustavus because we're sort of built on the notion that we're all here to help each other and lift each other up. And right now that maybe means staying in your dorm room a little bit more, you know, staying six feet apart, wearing a mask. But I think that people have been ready and willing to adapt to that. Haley. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Seeing the first years on campus and how incredibly well they did with following all the procedures, I feel like they set a really high precedent for all the rest of the upper class students to come back. And I'm really, really proud of how well they've done that so far. I know everyone's still feeling a little isolated. I mean, it's kind of just time really isn't real. You go to some classes in person, some classes online, you see your roommates. Um, so it's hard to really sustain those social connections. But from what I've seen so far, I think everyone's doing pretty well and I'm really proud of how they've done that. So I'm interested you two, it's your senior year. You're obviously, not only are you in classes now and thinking about what's happening here, you're thinking about your future and what's next. Can you talk to me about what your hopes and dreams are maybe as you think about graduating in the spring? I'll start with you, Haley. Yeah, so I actually changed my life plan just about two weeks ago over fall break after a conversation with my parents. I was originally planning to apply to law school right away, um, but I studied abroad in the Czech Republic last spring semester before it got unceremoniously cut short, um, and I realized I want to go back there. So I'm currently working to try to find a way to move back to the Czech Republic after graduation, whether it's through teaching, through English taught grad programs, just something to get me back abroad. That's exciting. Evie. Yeah, so I uh, am looking at law school as well, <laughs> like Haley was. Um, and part of that has been that uh, for the past couple summers and over J term and through the school year, I've been uh, working with the state of Minnesota um, and with one of the general counsel's office. And so I've been really interested in public service and looking at translating that into um, law that focuses on some of the things I've learned here at Gustavus, you know, supporting my community, um, helping others. So, yeah. Well, I'm so grateful for the two of you. You have been such a shining example of what Gusties are when they're here uh, and how you're making your lives count. I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the commitment you've made to helping bring everyone back. And uh, I wish you the very best in what comes ahead after Gustavus. And uh, thanks for all that you've done for the college grateful for both of you. As we move ahead, you know, we've talked, just talked about what the food service has done in the infrastructure at the college. We're going to talk about the custodians and what they have done and how hard they have worked to make sure that the dorms and all the buildings are clean. So I'm going to throw it ahead uh, to Tane as he goes out and talks to our custodians about the amazing work that they've done here at Gustavus to bring everybody back. Thanks, Haley. Thanks, Evie. All the best. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of people making uh, Gustavus work uh, really well right now. But I, I would argue that like probably when we're thinking about all the safety and making sure that everyone is uh, being taken care of, uh, there are a few people more important uh, than my next guest uh, and the folks that she works with. This is Jennifer Warren. Uh, Jennifer, I th we were talking, you've been here for 14 years. Yes. You work with the custodial staff here. Yes. And uh, and that's always important, I'm going to say, because Gustavus always looks beautiful. But now it's like extra super important because you are literally like saving our lives. <laughs> so can you just talk a little bit about like what your job has been and how it's been different uh, over those last six, eight months? Well, after the... Uh over the last six months since March and the students left campus, we have done everything to prep and prepare and clean and get ready for them to come back. Um, we're excited that they're here. We have added a hundred new hand sanitizing stations, um, over 400 of the um, sanitation boxes that students are able to use and take care of their own spaces themselves. Um, we have new equipment, um, UV lights for disinfecting high contaminated areas and um, 
electrostatic guns, which I have not gotten the what? Yes. No, I, wait a second. Is that I don't for, like if students are like getting too close together, you like fire the. No, 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 no. It's for it's for cleaning and disinfecting, you know, big areas, and making sure that everything is ready to go. So the next person walking in is safe. So I, I'm going to do just a little trip down memory lane, which might be a little bit sad, but I think it helps set the scene is that, you know, uh, students haven't been here for a while. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, you have been, I'm wondering if you can just sort of talk about what that's been like. It's been lonely. I mean, we have been pining for them to come back and we were busy all summer long prepping and cleaning and we actually had the opportunity to clean stuff without anyone disturbing it when we're cleaning and we can walk away and know tomorrow it's going to be the same um it was it was super quiet and you know we're glad they're here and so now last month students finally did come back and you have said, I've heard you say, like that uh, the move-in day is your favorite day, but I've got to imagine this year's move-in day was something extra and special. It was, it was, you know, having only a few of the kids move in right away, really gave us the opportunity to test everything out to make sure we knew what we were doing. And last weekend, I wish I could have been here every moment because it's an exciting time for the students to come back and we get to see them and you know welcome them home that is so cool um is there uh I, i'm going to just ask because you're doing a ton of work um is there anything that you would ask of people to make your life or job easier uh as we go through this together you know just stay safe and stay you know just keep your masks on and be conscious that we are in this together, and I know a lot of people say that, but we have to take care of each other. And it's not being taken care of yourself, it's protecting everyone else on campus. Uh, that is super fabulous. I, I can't thank you enough for all of the work that you are doing here. Um, and I, I, now that students are back, I don't know, can you just tell us a little bit about how it's different and how you're feeling? Um, I'm a little nervous about the students being back, but it's the first week. And the first week, it's just getting used to each other and, you know, learning their habits and them learning my routine and, you know, staying out of each other's way, but being together. And, you know, I don't know, it's, it's going to be different. It is going to be different, but, and, and it's going to be, it's going to be good, thanks to you. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I cannot say thank you enough for uh, your work and your service and, and making this place function uh, in a safe, effective way. So uh, thank you, um, and uh, happy give to Gustavus, Terry. I always give to Gustavus. This is good. I'm glad that we got that on camera. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, all right, fabulous. Hey everybody, Tane Danger here again. Uh, so you just saw me a second ago. I really am proud of that last segment. I, it was one of the ones I really wanted to do because it's hard to overstate how hard the staff here is working to make sure that everything is safe and secure for students and faculty and staff, and they are doing an incredible job. And so it really meant a lot to get to sit down uh, with some of the custodial staff who's doing extra and super work. And I'm going to say we've got an update here, but I had to say that first because that is why you are giving. Like that is literally how you are helping make sure that this place is as good and great and amazing it has always been, even when there's a big challenge. So if I'm looking at my big board here, we've got up to 35,000 total raised, which is awesome. I am going to point out we got a little bit of a pocket in some of these Western states right now uh, that have not donated. I am a little bit surprised, uh, you know, Idaho, what, uh, what's going on? I, I don't know, Nevada? Really, Nevada? 
things are going fine in Nevada. You can, you can chip in. We got to light you up. You got to be yellow. We want President Bergman's money and we have to light up all 50 states in order to get it. So please, if you are watching this right now, now is the time. Click the button. Make a gift of any amount. Make a donation of $60 and you get one of these super cool uh, Gus masks and then you can walk around terrifying people or looking adorable. Whatever you like. All right. That's enough of an update because I have a very special guest. I am very excited to talk to uh, both because he does a lot of really important work here and also because I've got to imagine his job is different now than it was uh, nine months ago, which is true for a lot of us. But I'm delighted to introduce Andrew Costin, who is the head of career development services here at Gustavus. Hello, sir. How are you? I think I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm pretty good. So um, can we talk about, so career development, uh, obviously a huge part of the experience for students and getting them out and prepared for the world. Uh, things I've got, to, as I said, they're different this year. How are you all adapting? How, how do things look different this year? Absolutely. You know, just like many other areas, things are different. Uh, the current circumstances have affected, you know, how students are, are managing themselves on campus and how they're viewing the, the world of work outside of campus. Yeah. Right now, you know, it's an uncertain job market that we have to prepare, you know, students that, uh, you know, that are going out into it. So things have changed. Uh, we are back on campus and uh, have been back on campus, uh, you know, since August. Our office is open, but generally we are uh, completing virtual appointments with students. I'd say about 95% of our appointments that we have are virtual. And uh, the connections that we help students make with employers, which in the past would have been on campus, uh, you know, employers would come to interview uh, students and meet them in person. Now those things have moved to a virtual setting as well. So we're still maintaining a high level of contact with students. We just have had to switch, you know, the way we do it just like many other areas of the college and uh, other organizations, you know, we're, we're adjusting. So I got to say, I thought that like I came out of Gustavus at a kind of awkward time. I graduated in 2007, just in time for like a 2008, 2009 recession. I've got to imagine like students are probably kind of nervous or <laughs> extremely nervous about going out into the job market and world right now. Like what kind of advice are you giving sure. them to really try and position them to be as successful in this kind of crazy year that we have as they can be. Yes, it, it is an uncertain world. Uh, literally, things are changing from week to week. And, you know, one of the conversations that we have with students, you know, before they get here or even with parents, when you talk about a liberal arts education, very often we've talked about problem solving and we've talked about the ability to, to react and respond uh, to situations and opportunities and to make decisions on the fly. And that has been a lot of the strength of the liberal arts students. Unfortunately, in this climate, we have to put those skills to use, you know, during this time in a way that uh, maybe no, you know, classes in, in, in previous times haven't had to do. So the advice that we give is to try to be as proactive as possible, uh, recognizing that, we, you know, we don't know what's going to happen so planning is, is important. Uh, students need to be prepared as early as possible with their resumes. It may take more employer contacts in order to obtain a position than maybe it would have taken two years ago. Expanding their network uh, of people and, and connections to organizations that can actually hire them. So it takes more planning, but also given at a time that they have uh, more concerns about their immediate circumstances and situations. And we recognize that students are dealing with just coming back to campus and, and, and the concerns of, uh, you know, COVID and staying on campus. Uh, but we're trying to help them also navigate that we still do need to think about what your next steps are and balance that because it's not an easy thing to do. Oh. And I got to underscore that thing. I mean, uh, to be out in the world this past year, if anything, 2020 has taught us it is the value of adaptability and having a variety of different skills that you can employ in different ways. And that is what a liberal arts education and particularly a Gustavus education provides. So 
that is very cool. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, if I'm an alum uh, and I am, uh, you know, all of a sudden looking for, for help <laughs> or I want to help, mm -hmm. are there ways that I can plug in to the uh, career services? Yes, we encourage our alums. Uh, we, we want to be connected with our alums. Uh, we have had several alums during this process reach out to us for their personal circumstances and say to us that, you know, uh, I've been impacted uh, through COVID in my job. I, I need help with uh, reorganizing myself or writing my own resume or getting, uh, you know, my own connections restarted. And we'll be glad to assist uh, and any alum could contact us to get help in that area. We also uh, are very anxious and interested in helping alums connect to our current students uh, yeah. in our mentoring program. Alums, uh, if, if they would like to be a mentor to a current Gusty, they can get involved in our mentoring program and we'd be glad to help them connect with a student that uh, has a similar, to ma a similar major and is interested in, in obtaining you know, information and a future position uh, in their field. Uh, we also would be interested in helping alums to connect with us in terms of having uh, internship opportunities available. Yeah. And yeah, I, we ha yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna ask, I mean, I've got to imagine that's a, rel that's a very uh, rewarding experience for alums to, you know, get to connect back with a student who's at the beginning of their career journey and maybe help them out. Yes, absolutely. I found our alums are very interested in being engaged uh, they want to reach back and they want to help them uh, help our students, you know, move and reach their career goals. And our alums, many of alums have told me stories about, you know, the person that helped them, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they want to do the same thing for someone else. So that's been very exciting, you know, for us to see. And we want to try to continue to help those connections uh, happen. We also have helped to uh, we have an engaged learning fund, so we recognize that many companies and organizations don't have the financial ability in this climate to uh, support an intern. And we have uh, developed an engaged learning fund where we can use funds to help support uh, those internships that might be unpaid or underpaid. So uh, we, we hope to continue to, to develop that as time moves on. That is, I didn't know about that. I mean, so this is so cool because I feel like what you're talking about is really uh, why we're here. Yes, we're raising funds, but ultimately this is about this community, right? Like we all come together and we make this place happen. And that's the work that you all are doing at the Career Center. It's the alumni, it's the students, and it ends up being bigger than any one of us could do by ourselves. So uh, I wanna say thank you so much. Uh, how do folks get plugged in if they are interested? How do they reach out to you? Sure, absolutely. They can reach us either by email at career at gustavis.edu or they can contact us by phone 933-7575 uh, and uh, we'll be glad to connect with them right away. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew. This was absolutely fantastic to talk with you. Uh, I hope everybody at home is uh, both giving but learning something about the services that Gustavus is providing to students, to alumni, to our entire community. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank All you right. so Have much as well. Have a great rest of your okay. day. All right, I'm you gonna too. throw it Have over a to a sizzle video. Hi.
Hey everybody, and welcome back to Give to Gustavus Day. As you might notice, I've changed location and I want the irony to be rich. Tom Young in a microbiology research lab is not happened in my lifetime uh, and certainly wasn't part of my Gustavus experience, uh, but it's great to be in uh, the renovated part of Nobel. Uh, uh, for those who spent all their days in Nobel, when it's safe and uh, we're able to have you back on campus, you won't believe what Nobel looks like with a new North Atrium. Hey, I want to give a shout out uh, to Mississippi that uh, flipped uh, on my way over from our other studio here. So thank you. Uh, I think that means, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're still waiting on Alabama. I can't quite see the screen from here. So, uh, but stay tuned. But now, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Neil Hagberg and Leandra Peak to join us for this next segment. Uh, it's great to have you two. Thanks for being here. Well, hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Thank you. So I, I think uh, before we get to the heart of the matter, which, of course, is music, uh, maybe for everybody who's watching, what have you been doing since you graduated? And, and uh, where are you? What do you have going on? Is this a memory test? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not go down that path. What did we do? We did 25 years of concert tours as Neil and Leander all over the United States. Uh, and uh, I took a little foray after that into the world of nonprofits, worked at a food shelf. Now I'm a realtor. And Neil? I'm a director of Tennis and Life Camps at Stavis. So, uh, so there you go. We're still writing, still singing, but we're not performing for well, audience that, but we just said that was it. And uh, we headed on into new things that are just really fulfilling with Gustavus and with the real team. Wow, you both have been crushing it and, and doing fantastic work. Uh, uh, I see that in the Twin Cities for you, Leandra and, and Neil. Obviously, you and I work together down here on, on campus uh, and, and been doing an amazing job. Uh, following in the legacy of Steve Wilkinson, leading the Tennis and Life Camps, expanding the reach uh, and the important topics you're taking up there. Uh, what a terrific continued partnership for the two of you. So thank, thanks for all of that. But uh, while you're not touring and performing, music is still part of your life, right? It is. I mean, Neil keeps writing. Um, occasionally he'll rope me into doing something. When the pandemic started and the shutdown, we did a few uh, little just videos with our daughter who was captive here because she was stuck at home. So she'd have to hold the iPhone and then we'd do a little singing. And uh, it's just sort of, it's just a fun outlet for us right now, which is which is a great thing to have in our life. And since we retiring from performing and, and, and concerts and whatever, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'd probably have a hundred and some songs that'll never be heard by other people, which is a gift to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I get to keep yeah. hearing them over and over. She hears them and she goes, "Well, I'm sure glad we retired when we did." Yeah, we, we actually had to say we we sang about a year ago for a fundraiser, and Neil said, "Well, I have about a hundred songs I'd like to play for you," and I was like, oh, "Okay." And so we got through the whole hundred, and I was like, "Okay." I was pretty checking, much just check, checking, no, checking. check, no, <laughs> check. See, it's good to have an editor. Yeah, so yeah. he had about 20 songs he wanted to play for me, really. Which is still good. You know, when you think <laughs> yeah. about it, that's a pretty good percentage. Yeah. That's fantastic. I can't help but wonder about the times we're in right now with the, the stress and, and the challenges that COVID-19 places on all of us. How does music play a role for you in times like this, especially? And why, why is it important to keep playing for you? And I think for everybody in whatever capacity they're involved in music. You got that in You get it. Okay. I'll put it in the context of the song that you're gonna hear after this. Uh, when I, it's been, it's, it's been such a challenge emotionally for everybody. And, and uh, we had to cancel Tennis and Life Camp six summer. And for the first time in 44 years, 1,600 campers can't come. And it, it, was, it was tough. And I find my solace in walking around the lake every morning, and then I do writing. And I, I do, seriously have written dozens of songs during COVID. But there is one particular song that, as I was writing around, I was thinking about Gustavus. And I was thinking about how committed and how thoughtful Gustavus has been during this 
pandemic time and how they've reached out to faculty, to alumni, to students, and to try to have a thoughtful plan going forward as much as possible, but also how how wrenching that is for all the people that work at Gustavus trying to put this together and how wrenching it is for the alumni that are trying to find their way through. And I started writing this song about Gustavus called Light on the Hill. And it became this love song for Gustavus. And, and then I came back and I played it for Leandra and she goes, and she said, you need to work a lot harder on that one. <laughs> so, so I did. She, he needed me to fix it, is yes, what he needed. <laughs> Which I did. But there, must have been, but there must have been something there, Leandra. What, what, what did you hear the first time that well, uh, you know, said, put that on the list of 20, not on the list of 80? Yeah, I think, well, I really obviously liked the whole theme of the light on the hill. It resonated for me as, as someone who went to Gustavus when, uh, when Chaplain Elvey would talk about the people of the hill. Um, and I, you know, I was the sacristan one time for my senior year. So I remember the eternal light and the eternal flame in the chapel. And so there were a lot of references in there. There's a couple of internal references that are just specific to well, one, just to Neil and me. When we first started dating in the second verse, um, there's a reference to being by my side. And we met because I sang in a production of Godspell in 19... 80, I think it was, when fall I, of 1980. And that's how we started, how we met. She was, she was singing the song by my side. And I, honest to God, fell in love up in the audience. And I raced down in front of the 10 other guys that were trying to get to her. Uh, I don't remember those 10. <laughs> and, and as a kind of reference just to us, with you by my side, We'll show, and, and then the other thing I wanted to put in there was uh, I wanted to put in there something uh, Gustavus that you know, the rousers in there even though this isn't a rouser song but shine on you know shine on is that that's what gusties do they shine on I thought this is what this is about this is what the light on the hill is about it's about all of us and uh, so she made me simplify the verses uh, which were way too complicated and I just brought them down to really simple. And then she put the verse chorus together, or verses the music together, because it wasn't working. And I tried, okay. and I definitely wanted it for my own, because of my ego. And she said, doesn't work, put in the music, and it's like, oh my God, that's it. So, Gusty's collaborate. I'll go out on a limb here, but it sounds like a partnership. But uh, Neil, Leandra, do you write very many love songs? And how many love songs for Gustavus have you written? Are you asking me if I've written love songs or Neil? Well, both of you. I, but this is the first time you've written a love song to uh, uh, the college, correct? To the college, for to sure. To an institution, yes. Yeah. This is the only institution a love song's been written for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And a great opportunity to partner with another Gustavus friend, Chris Rupp. How did that yeah. happen and what did you bring to the table? Well, it was so fun. It was, you know, we were talking to Katie Schrader about what we could do with this. And she said, oh, maybe you want to record it with Chris Rupp. Let's see if he's available. And of course, we didn't know who he was. And, and then, well, wait, wait. well, no. And then he she said, we oh, were. he was from Home Free. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know. So uh, we just had such a great time. We went over to his studio and recorded and he sang with us and he played bass on the song and he helped us with the video. I mean, he, he was just, he's like a multi-talented juggernaut. I mean, he's just amazing. So he it was really, really was. fun. And, 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 you know, besides the fact that, you know, he really didn't know who we were. And that's, <laughs> so it, it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that that's completely true. If you move in Gustavus circles, you know who Leandra and, and Neil are. So <laughs> I think that maybe it's time for us to make the world premiere of Light on the Hill by our very own Neil Hagberg and Leandra Peak featuring Gustavus' friend, uh, Chris Rupp. Why don't we go to the video now? Thanks, Thanks guys. On Congratulations. Shine on. Thanks. Talk Thanks. to you later. Bye.
any storms We can make it through one more If you're weary to the bone Take my hand, you're not alone There's a light on the hill It is a flame It has a name It is a place That you come to That you will leave But when you do You take it with you Every time I fall It's you Did you know they held me through And with you here by my side We will shine on, shine on, shine There's a light on the hill It is a flame Oh my gosh, so please take a moment, have your tissues ready. Wipe, well, you should have had your tissues ready already. Wipe away your tears. You need to have we clear eyes in order people. to make a donation. Yes, that was amazing. That was great. Uh, so we're, we're getting towards the end of our first uh, live segment this morning. Uh, and we have made amazing progress. You all are stepping up and donating and making a really big impact. Uh, Angela, what's what's left? What do we still need before we have about five minutes before this segment ends? That's right. Yeah, we are off to a fantastic start. I know that we have about 12 states left in the 50 state challenge, 50 states. And we'll dump into that pot if we can get those last 12 states illuminated. So take a look at the map, Gusties. If you know anybody in those states, make sure that you're giving them a call, sending them a text 
asking them to give today. We would love to get that map illuminated before we come on again at noon. Uh, we've got our sustainers challenge going strong, but we need more sustainers today. This is a new challenge, right? It's something that is uh, conceptually new for Give to Gustavus Day, but we love the idea. Matt Timmons was a great example of talking about how you just set it and forget it, right? You know that you care about Gustavus, you know that you want to give, but you don't want to have to remember all the time. And uh, so we would love to set that up for folks uh, as sustaining givers. So please take advantage of that uh, new challenge today. We get uh, an amount of those and then we get a, a pool of money that will drop into the pot as well. Um, and one other thing, there's a really fun opportunity today to send a gusty gram to someone. So if you are an alum or a friend out there uh, and you would love to send a gusty gram to someone here on campus, you can do that right from our donation page. Uh, make sure to go to the Give to Gustavus Day website uh, on the donation page. You can uh, select that option and you can send a gusty gram and we will get that hand delivered to uh, to that person from you. Uh, a lot of fun to be able to connect with the folks on campus, both current students uh, as well as faculty or staff or other people that you remember during your time on the Hill. Tim, how are you feeling about these first couple of hours on our live stream? Well, my cup is full, Angela. Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, I've always feel, felt so unbelievably blessed. To, I had no idea that I was gonna end up spending my professional career at Gustavus, but I believe so deeply in it. And days like this are what allow me to realize um, how fortunate I have been. Um, starting from all the things that are going behind the scenes that people can't see to make this broadcast come together. Uh, grateful for my team and, and your team also, and Katie Schrader and just Barb Larson Taylor and Matt Dobosinski and just everybody that's done so much to make this all happen. And then to hear the stories, Tane, uh, all the things that you've done around campus and talk to all the different people about how everybody's pitching in to make life possible at Gustavus right now. Really, really grateful. And uh, I would just say to you all, Thank you for all the ways that you helped Gustavus. I hope that you'll consider supporting us today. Uh, these are people committed to a mission that come to work every day. These are students that are trying to make the world a better place. It's a really, really good cause. And I hope that you'll just feel that and contribute and help us out and also learn something about the college during the day. So yeah. let me say this, yeah. there's a lot of numbers that are up on this screen. We have a lot of really important challenges going, but just don't, Think about that for one second, because like right now, like you are watching at home and you have stuck with us and paid attention and it's because you care about this place. Gustavus has meant something to you and you know how much it could mean to generations and generations of students to come. That there are thousands of students on campus right now because of hard work and people coming together and figuring stuff out. And so right now, again, don't focus on uh, the, the different challenges, the different kind of things that we're talking about. Just think about you and how much this place means to you and make a gift because of that. Because ultimately that's the most important thing is, is you Giving because it is something that really matters and means something to you wherever you are in the country, in the world, in your life, you're making a connection back to this place. You're making sure that it's strong and it's good for the students who are here now and who will be here next year and the year after. So just think for a second about how much Gustavus means to you and then click the button to make a donation because that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Yeah, absolutely. Click that button. You're right, Tan. It's been so fun. I know, you know, Tim obviously has been here for many years and I've been here for a few. It is just so heartwarming to hear all of those stories about how Gustavus continues to make a difference in the life of our alumni uh, and our friends out there. Uh, and, and we want that legacy to continue far into the future. That's what Give to Gustavus Day is all about. That's what jumping in the pool and supporting this place is all about. So it's not just about what's happening right here, right now. It's what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. So thanks for that reminder, Tane. If people need to replay that video that we just uh, led into this segment with to get their heartstrings tugged just a little bit more, I encourage you to go ahead and play that back one more time. Uh, but otherwise, we are going to let you go here for uh, the next little bit. We will be back on at 12 p.m. Central Time. Uh, in the meantime, 
don't quit giving to Gustavus. We, uh, the phone lines will be open. The opportunity to give is going strong all day long. Uh, keep an eye on our webpage. Keep an eye on social media. We've seen tons of Gus masks, uh, people sporting those Gus masks out on social media today. So make sure that you're rocking your gusty gear, wear your gusty mask, uh, snap a pic on social, and keep connected with us throughout the day. We'll see you in a little bit, everybody. All right. Gusty will shine.